course, this episode we're going to be explaining import maps, everything you need to know about them in order to use them in your Rails applications. We're going to set up an import map from scratch so you can understand how this works, and then we'll talk about how Rails adds to this to make it better integrated with Rails, the asset pipeline, and uh, handling your CDN loaded um, packages from NPM, for example. So let's dig into import maps themselves. Now an import map is a special tag that you write in your browser as a script tag and you say import map is the type. And inside of here you define a JSON object with an imports object inside and you give it keys. And these keys are the name of your package and they just need to point to some sort of URL. It could either be HTTPS to a CDN or it could be a relative URL. For example, if we want to say just example.js, um, we could define that example.js file and then import it by name, so by example as the name. So in order to use these, we need to use the modern JavaScript uh, tags, which will be modules, instead of text JavaScript. If you try to do this, you will get an error saying that uh, imports must be used in modules. So if we say script type is module, what we'll end up with is uh, this loading the module named example. It has to look into imports. It will find the matching one and then load this JavaScript file and then execute it. So it will download that and run it whenever you call import with the matching name. So in order to wire this up, we need to add an example JS file into our public folder. And we'll just say console.log example. If we open this up in our browser, I've got a brand new Rails 8 app that we're using for this. It prints out example because it loaded the import, downloaded example.js, and executed that. So that's good. If we want to put in here also console log module, you'll see that this gets printed out afterwards because it has to import example first and run that, and then it can run the next line of code here which is the console log for modules. So that's why we see example first and then module second. We can also set up other imports and say like hello points to something totally different like hello world.js. And let's say we want to import that here. So anytime that we do an import, it will reference that import map. So we can say hello inside of our example uh, module. And if we refresh, what we should see is an error saying that that file does not exist, but it was triggered by example.js line one. So it tells us this is the line of code that we tried to find hello world JS because it existed in your import map, but the file does not exist. So let's add hello world.js to make that work. We'll console log from here, hello world. There we go. And now we'll get hello world example and then module. And that is because this starts running, loads example, example starts running, loads hello, hello prints out hello world. Then we come back here and finish with console log example. Then we finally come back here and finish with console log module. And that's how we get hello world example and then module printed out. So the next question you probably have and I did was how do we get these to actually be tied to the asset pipeline? We just wrote some static files in our public folder, but that isn't what we are going to need in production. So what we can do is use the ERB helper path to asset um, and give it a name like example JS and output that. And we'll need to put that in a JSON string. So it'll look like this. But if we do that for both of these, we can get the path to asset for each one and move these files into, instead of public, we'll put that into app JavaScript, example JS. We'll move this one to app JavaScript, hello world JS. And we can refresh our page and what we should see, oops, we need a quote on this one for the Ruby string, there we go. And you'll see it works just like it did before. However, if we look at our script import map, it now points to assets slash the file name with a digest appended to it, 
digest.js. Same for Hello World. We have digest for each one of these, and that is the asset pipeline taking the path to the asset that lives in our app JavaScript folder now. And it's saying, okay, that's the file. We found it. You found the source file. The output of that file uh, will be with a digest that we will have under slash assets that we will pre-compile in production, in development. We'll have it, uh, you know, mounted under slash temp or wherever that might be. And that will reference that asset for us. So that's got us uh, integrated to the asset pipeline, which is awesome. But the last piece it, that Rails will do for us is adding links where the rel preload um, option is set up for us. So what's cool about this is they will also generate hrefs in these links with the path to asset example.js and close that, do the same thing for our hello world.js. And this is what Rails will imp uh, output for you automatically by default because all of these assets that are pinned in your import map um, will be preloaded. So whenever the page loads, it will hit these links and say, okay, we'll download those immediately so that they're ready to go whenever your module is actually executed. So that makes your loading a little bit faster because these can be preloaded. If you have a big one that you want to lazy load, you can just turn the preloading off and that will take care of that. So that's pretty awesome. Now I'm gonna delete all this and we'll take a look and see exactly how Rails does this by going to our application and uncommenting out the JavaScript import map tags. This line here will generate everything that we created uh, from scratch for Rails using the import map Rails gem. And it is going to look at config import map.rb and create a map using all of the pins that you have here. So pin application means look for application JS, which in the folders it will find app JavaScript application JS. It will pin it to application JS with the asset pipelines helper. Then for gems that might provide JavaScript, it does the same thing. You give it the name of the gem and then it's going to look in all the folders for a turbo.min.js because this file name does not match exactly the same name as the pin. Um, and then we can also pin an entire folder and use that with uh, the name controllers. So this will be controllers. It will grab this folder. Index.js will be named controllers. There will also be controllers application, controller slash hello controller, and you can import any of those as well. And stimulus loading actually is pretty cool because inside of there, in index.js, you can tell it, hey, go and look through the import map and find everything under controllers that has an underscore controller in the file name um, or the map name, and it will pull all those in for you as well. It's a pretty crafty way of doing that, which I really like. So let's refresh our page and go to the head tag and see what Rails generates for us. Here's our import map, and very similar to what we did from scratch, it generates an import map. It also adds a data turbo track to reload anytime this changes. Um, and also, the import map has all of those files um, or pins that we had referenced in the import map.rv file, and it uses the same path to asset that uh, we used in order to get the references to each of these assets. And here are the links I mentioned where rel is module preload, points to the same asset paths, and then finally, the entry point script type module is what triggers application.js to be run and loaded from the import map. And that's really all that the import map rails gem does for you. Uh, adds that helper and basically takes care of generating all that for you with just a single line. All you have to do is manage your config import map.rb file to make sure it references all of the JavaScript files and has the correct names for each one of them. That's about it. Now to add, um, say, a third party library like my Tailwind CSS stimulus components, um, normally you would add this with yarn or npm or whatever, but you can use bin import map in order to add this to your import maps. So we'll go ahead and do that. And what you will see is this is gonna run a command that will download a file called uh, Tailwind CSS Stimulus Components.js in our vendor JavaScript folder. 
So this is pretty cool. It actually uses JSPM.io to take whatever module you ask for, and it will convert that into a single file module that is downloaded in your vendor JavaScript folder. That way, your application doesn't depend on a CDN. There's no security risk or uh, you know maybe downtime from the CDN or something else going wrong. You have all the JavaScript locally being served by your Rails application, so that's really great. It also will go and grab the latest version. Right now, it's 6.1.2, and also even will look at the dependencies and download those as well and make them a single file. So this one is going to be stimulus .js under our vendor JavaScript hotwired folder. Now we've already got the stimulus rails gem, so we can undo that change. We will just say this goes to stimulus.min.js and leave that alone. But under vendor JavaScript, we now have our Tailwind CSS stimulus components. And we can reference these how we might normally. I usually drop these under application. We just need to register the uh, components with our stimulus application. So that could be either here or in index.js. Um, might be even better in here, actually. So let's go ahead and do that. Do, do, do. Uh, this is application JS. So let me get rid of there. Let's close that, save this one. And then we can grab one of the example components. I will probably do the color preview. This has a little bit of Tailwind styling, which we do not have in our example app here. But if we go into index.html.erb, we can paste this in, which uses that color preview stimulus controller and we are off to the races. So if we go to change the color of this, the preview is automatically wired up because it's using the stimulus controller that was registered through our import map that we loaded, which is awesome. So uh, also you can see if you look at the import map, you'll see we get Tailwind CSS stimulus components references that uh, with the digest at the end. Um, and it's also, module preloaded. Um, I believe if you go to import map.rb and we said like preload is false um, and we refresh, this should still work, but we will not see it in the preload list anymore, but it will be lazily loaded whenever uh, it is referenced, which it's loaded immediately. So there's no real reason to turn that off, but it's an option you can use here if you need to. Um, so what's cool is that JSPM uh, CDN will actually go and take whatever library you grab and get all the dependencies for you, but also will try to bundle those into a single file so that when we import that locally from our pins, when it looks in vendor JavaScript, it says, oh, found the file name that matches. There we go. We don't have to worry about having big old folders full of node modules and their dependencies and sub dependencies and all that. Um, we just have a very clean vendor JavaScript that we can update whenever we need to. Um, so whenever we want to update this, the bin import map command has some, uh, some options. We can audit for security um, fixes and releases that have been applied since we've installed it. We can do updates, we can unpin and remove things, and we can also check for the outdated packages. And you can also have it print out the JSON for your import map straight from the command line if you need that as well. So that's it for import maps. They're really not that complex, but what's really cool about this is uh, if we were to look at the Rails application assets for prop shaft, the paths that are defined are where it will look when we try to find an asset. So if we're looking for say turbo.min.js, it's gonna be just like your um, terminal, your shell having the path and you like type Ruby, it will look through all those folders until it finds the Ruby command. This is basically the same thing. It looks through all these paths until it finds turbo.min.js, which means because your application's code, uh, mine called import mapper, in my home directory uh, and slash code, it's going to look through these locations first for any turbo.min.js. So if I want to supply my own turbo uh, version, what maybe I've compiled a version with a bug fix or something like that, 
I can drop it in my app JavaScript or vendor JavaScript, and it will find and use that first before it falls back and finds it in the Turbo Rails gem, which is pretty cool. So this is a great tool for you to grab things from gems, but also be able to provide your own overrides for anything that you might need to do like that. It's just a very simple, uh, straightforward mechanism for referencing assets. And that's what I really like about PropShaft. It doesn't have any of the extra stuff to compile CSS or less or SAS or, you know, coffee script. It is just looking at, do you have this file? Okay, great. We'll make a digest for it if you don't already. And uh, we will serve that up and make it accessible to your Rails apps. So that is it. Import maps are actually incredibly straightforward to use. That helper that we saw in the application layout is this one here, JavaScript import map tags. It spits out three different helper methods into your HTML. First is your inline import map tag, that JSON um, tag that is defined right here. Type of import map, data turbo track is reload. You can supply a nonce if you have one. Um, and then your import module tag will also do the imports for your entry point. So entry point is application by default. If you decided to rename that, you can. You just need to remember to pass JavaScript import map tags. And the first argument is the string of which uh, module you want to load. Um, and you can even have multiple import maps as well. So if you're building a gem and want to supply your own separate import map, you can absolutely still use this for that. And we'll talk about that in a future lesson. Um, but I encourage you to take a look at the code for import map rails. There is not a lot here. Uh, most of it's, you know, around downloading the assets from JSPM and other little things like that. But for the most part, it is very straightforward. There's some caching things and a handful of other little things, but that is really all there is to it. Um, it is an incredibly great, simple library to use for your assets going forward. And I definitely encourage you to try it out and use it in your new Rails applications um, because it makes for a great time not having to uh, bundle anything with Webpack or ESBuild or Vite. Um, for small applications, this is lightning fast and easy to use, especially now that modern JavaScript is pretty well supported in browsers and we're not lacking lots of uh, important features like we used to. So that's it for import maps. If you have other questions, let us know in the comments below and I will talk to you in the next lesson where we eventually get into doing import maps for Rails engines where they need their own UI in their own separate JavaScript from the main application. So until then, I will talk to you all later. Peace.